Hello everyone, uh, my name is Shane O'Boyle, I'm with the Environmental Protection Agency and today I'm going to give you a presentation on water quality in Ireland. Most of what um, I'm presenting today is based on the results um, of our recent water quality in Ireland report um, which we published towards the end of last year. I think a good place to start is to look really at the benefits of, of good water quality. Uh, having access to good water quality and sufficient quantities of it is essential for our health and well-being and for our economy. And it's not just about the quality of that water, it's also about the quantity of it. And of course, good water quality is critical to our aquatic species and water habitats. You might have seen in the recent Living Planet Index that freshwater species as a biome are one of the most threatened biomes on the planet with 84% of species assessed in decline, and most of that decline is being driven by poor water quality. Poor water quality can also cause human illness. It can damage our economy and pollute our aquatic environment. And unfortunately, as we're too often aware in Ireland, too much water can cause floods, and occasionally we also see droughts. And on this slide, we can see some of the examples of, of the benefits of good water quality. So obviously that's clean drinking water, um, clean and safe beaches to go, to go swimming, and clean food from our marine environment. On the right-hand side, we can see some of the negative consequences of poor water quality. Polluted surface waters, not being able to go and swim uh, at your favorite beach, and not being able to collect shellfish um, from shellfish growing areas. In terms of water quality in Ireland, uh, the management and assessment of water quality in Ireland has revolved around the EU Water Framework Directive. Um, this, this directive came into force in, in 2000. And one of the main objectives um, of the Water Framework Directive is to achieve good water status for all waters by 2027 at the latest. This also includes a, a no deterioration clause. So if your waters are already in good or better status, they must be maintained uh, in that status. The means by which uh, the objectives of the directive are to be achieved um, are to be set out in national river basin management plans. And Ireland published its second cycle national river basin management plan in 2018. So the purpose of our current assessment uh, of water quality is to assess the progress that we have made uh, in achieving the objectives uh, that have been set out uh, in this plan. Before looking at the main findings of the assessment, I think it would be useful just to give you a quick overview of how we go about um, assessing water quality. We follow the Water Framework Directive Assessment Framework, so we look at five water categories. They are rivers, lakes, transitional waters, coastal waters, groundwater. Uh, transitional waters, that's the term used in the directive, but that refers to estuaries and lagoons. Um, there are three main assessments. Uh, we assess ecological status, chemical status, and quantitative status. Ecological status looks at the ecological health of our surface water bodies, so it looks at our aquatic species, our plants and our animals. Uh, chemical status looks at the presence of chemical substances such as herbicides and, and pesticides and metals like mercury, both in our surface waters uh, and our groundwater. And quantitative um, status looks at the volume of groundwater beneath our feet. Then as an example of the classification we use, say for example for surface waters and assessing ecological status, we have a five class classification system uh, which goes from high through good, moderate, poor and bad. And you can see on the right hand side the level of impact associated with each of those classes. So again, uh, in, in high status, uh, the level of impact is minor or non-existent, but that increases to slight, moderate, major, severe as we go through the uh, each of the classes. So water bodies that are in poor or bad um, ecological status um, are significantly um, or severely uh, impacted by pollution. So just to just to mention as well that the information we use in the assessment is collected from the National Monitoring Programme. So uh, we collected information from over 2,700 surface water bodies and 500 uh, groundwater bodies. And that information was collected between 2013 and 2018. In terms of the main findings, uh, what the report found was that just over half, 52.8% of surface waters um, are uh, in good or better ecological health. So 
what that means, we found these waters to be in either good or high ecological status. In terms of the change since our last assessment, 68.4% of waters uh, remained stable, they didn't change. 18% um, of water bodies declined and 13.6% of water bodies improved. So if we look at that on a, on a number of water bodies basis, we see that 364 water bodies improved in quality and 481 water bodies declined in quality. So overall, we saw 4.4% net decline. Now, while that shows the net decline, it's important to point out that nearly 500 water bodies um, declined in quality since the last assessment, indicating that we have a number of human activities uh, taking place uh, in, 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 in Ireland, um, which is damaging water quality. So if we start to look at the main uh, the individual water categories, if we start with rivers, uh, the report found that 53% of rivers um, are in good or better ecological health. That means 47% um, are either in moderate, poor or bad ecological health. The rate of decline in rivers um, was higher than the national rate of decline at 5.5%, which is a substantial decline um, um, over that time period. Um, there probably are a number of factors uh, causing that decline. Um, siltation, uh, physical modifications to rivers, um, but also nutrient enrichment. And if we look at one of the standards that we, sh uh, that we use to assess quality, we find that over a third of river water bodies are failing to meet um, the environmental quality standard for phosphate. So basically what that means is there, there are too, there's too much um, phosphate in over a third of the rivers that we assess. And also just to point out as well, that in 26% of the rivers uh, that we have assessed, um, we've also seen evidence of increasing nutrient concentration of both phosphate and nitrate. If we just move on and we look at, uh, we look at, at, at the catchment level, um, we find that again, the, the pie charts represent, um, gray represents stable, so no change. Uh, red represents uh, a decline and green represents an improvement. So uh, unfortunately, in the majority of, 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 of catchments and nearly all catchments, we are seeing uh, a decline. And in the majority of those, um, the proportion of river water bodies um, that have declined is greater than the proportion of river water bodies um, that have improved in quality. If we move on to, to lakes, we see again that just over half are in good or better ecological health. And again, we see evidence that, that nutrient enrichment is one of the factors uh, driving the, driving the um, status of our lakes. So if we look at the total phosphorus standard, we find that 29% of lakes are failing that standard. And we also see that of the lakes assessed, that 29% of lakes are also showing an increase uh, in the level of total phosphorus. In estuaries and coastal waters, um, unfortunately, estuaries are the worst performing category, so 38, only 38% 38 of estuaries are in good or better ecological health. Um, and that contrasts with our coastal waters, where we see that the majority of coastal waters, 80%, are in good or better ecological health. And you would have maybe noticed that in the map that I, had, um, that I showed at the beginning of the presentation. Um, we have large areas of coastal waters um, that are in high status. And we probably have some of the best coastal waters uh, in the European Union. But again, there is evidence that these waters, and particularly the estuaries, are under pressure. And we have seen an increase in nutrient loading. So from our rivers and from our towns and from other uh, sources, we have seen those sources increase. Um, loads of nitrogen um, has increased uh, by 16%. And even more significantly, uh, loads of phosphorus has increased by 31%. And then finally, the final um, water category is groundwater. And groundwater uh, is, in, is in much better um, shape. 99% um, uh, of groundwater bodies assessed are in good quantitative status, and 92% um, are in good chemical status. Um, but again, we are seeing evidence of increasing um, nutrient concentration, in this case, nitrates. So we are seeing an increase in 6.5% of sites uh, in nitrate concentrations greater than 25 milligrams per litre of nitrate. 
So in terms of the pressures or the human activities impacting on water quality, the EPA have carried out a very comprehensive assessment or characterization of those pressures. And if we look at the results of that assessment, we find that the four main pressures causing impacts on water quality in Ireland are agriculture, hydromorphology, which is again, the physical changes made to rivers um, in terms of maybe flood protection works, channelization or dredging. Uh, the third most significant pressure is urban waste water. And the fourth uh, significant pressure is forestry. So in terms of you know, the evidence, um, do we have any evidence of the impacts of these, these pressures uh, in the environment? Then one, one strand of evidence um, is, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, uh, the number of rivers where we're seeing increasing um, river nutrient concentrations. So you can see in the map um, on the left hand side uh, is nitrate. Um, red indicates where concentrations are increasing, yellow indicates where concentrations are stable, and blue indicates where concentrations have declined. So you can see that uh, in both maps, on the left is nitrate, on the right is phosphate. You can see in both maps that, both maps, uh, that we have a large proportion of river sites um, where we have increasing nutrient uh, concentrations. So just coming towards the end of my presentation, um, just to mention the River Basin Management Plan, Ireland's second cycle River Basin Management Plan was published in 2018. Um, you can download the plan from the Department of Housing's website. Um, the plan includes a number of measures um, uh, that have been established to um, help in achieving the objectives uh, of the Water Framework Directive and to improve water quality. Two of the key measures um, established by the plan um, was the establishment of the local authority waters program law pro and the agricultural sustainability support and advisory program so at the moment law, law pro are undertaking local catchment assessments um, looking at individual areas and looking at the sources of pollution in those areas and uh, coming up with um, measures that need to be put in place to address um, those sources so the initial, uh, the plan has prioritized um, action uh, in over 700 water bodies in 189 um, priority areas for action. So work has been um, underway uh, in those areas. And based on the results in um, our recent report, there are some early signs of improvements in these areas. Um, the um, proportion of water bodies uh, improving uh, is higher than the national average. Um, but Obviously, uh, I think we probably need more monitoring um, to confirm um, that this is the case. And of course, we'll be doing that in the, uh, the coming years. And then finally, just to mention um, that the next River Basin Management Plan, which covers the period 2022 uh, to 2027, is currently being um, prepared um, by the Department of Housing. If you would like to download the report, uh, then it's available from um, the EPA website. And if you, you would actually like to look at some of the data uh, underpinning the report, uh, then you can access the data um, from the catchment study uh, website. Um, thank you for listening and have a good day.